to welcome back to my channel and welcome to a closer book this is where I give a little deeper discussion on three of the books that I've read recently and today we're going to be discussing two short story collections as well as a standalone novel all three of these books take place outside of the United States so let's go on a little trip <laughs> first up is Mexico stories by Josh Barkin this was book number 13 in my yearly reading challenge this is a short story collection that is set mostly in Mexico City the writer Josh Barkin is from the United States but he's been living in Mexico City for a while the first story follows a chef who has been recruited from a restaurant in the United States and has set up this new um, trendy restaurant in Mexico City until one day he's visited by El Chapo and his bodyguards who come in during uh, regular service and demand that the chef makes him a special meal he wants him to make a meal that consists of only two ingredients and that will be the most delicious thing he's ever eaten in his life or he'll kill him um, what <laughs> so he's faced with making this really terrible decision deciding whether to sacrifice someone or sacrifice himself in an attempt to make El Chapo happy and possibly save his own life and lives of the others of his patrons and it was just a really gripping story like straight off the bat right out the gate this is what you meet the next story was very similar. It was about a teacher who was caught up in some kind of a Romeo and Juliet situation. Again, they're in Mexico. Um, two children in his class, a boy and a girl, they are in love, but they are from rival families, rival narcotic drug families. One of the families visits the teacher in school and demands that the, the couple separate and that the teacher keep them separate or he will kill him I mean like seriously what do you do in a situation like that so that's those are the kinds of stories that were in this collection all the stories were graphic they were gripping they were interesting the plots were very diverse um, there were elements that linked the characters but the major underlying theme was just this life of crime the major theme in this book was violence and crime and it hits you in the face like really quickly and it doesn't go away throughout the book you kind of want to sympathize with these characters you don't want to blame them for the decisions that they make because you're thinking like what would i have done in that situation the the, the situations were just like so unreal some of them except I guess these things really happen. There was one major challenge for me in reading the book. It was a title. I didn't like that this story that centered on violence and crime and lawlessness was entitled Mexico. It seemed a little stereotypical and a little unfair that you would take a story with this kind of violence, with this kind of with these kinds of scenarios and name them after a country as though that is a major characteristic of this country so I felt like that was a little unfair however I did appreciate that it was an attention grabber I mean the cover is beautiful but that title Mexico was what hooked me in the beginning so if that was a decision that the author or the publishers made in order to make the book more attractive to readers then of course it worked so I can understand why they made that choice but in in view of the political climate that we're in, you know, the current relation, the current um, tensions between America and Mexico, I felt like that was a little offensive. The thing that kind of saved it though, is that although the major theme seems to be on crime, the characters all make some decision to justify what they have done or kind of redeem themselves in the end. My major takeaway then was that the major theme was not crime and violence it was characters good honest characters overcoming crime and violence so triumph over violence and crime so that kind of saved it for me the cover like I said was one of the things that drew me in these blackout spots on the picture those are supposed to be bullet holes by the way because that's what this book shows but if you think about it the book is still beautiful so even though there are bullet holes kind of tarnishing the picture you can still appreciate the beauty of the picture so i like that i like that a lot i rated i rated this collection four stars and 
I recommend it. I wrote a full blog post on it, so I'll link that in the comments below if you'd like to read more of what I thought about this book. Book number 14 is Here Comes the Sun by Nicole Dennis Ben. This book takes place in Jamaica and it is following three women, a mother and her two daughters. The mother sells souvenirs in the craft market. Her older daughter works in the hotel industry and helps to support the family. Her younger daughter is 16 years old and she's in school and she's about to take those exams that will allow her to move on to college. <laughs> The women live in a very poor community, a squatter community, which means that they don't have their own permanent place of residence. They're renting kind of like a shack and they don't have a lot of the basic amenities. So they steal electricity from someplace, from somewhere else in the community. They don't have things like um, regular water supply. And so they take baths in, in they take baths outside and just a very dismal life, a life of poverty. The author in this book tackled issues like homosexuality and the way it is viewed in a traditional society like Jamaica is. Um, prostitution, prostitution in the tourist industry as well as prostitution elsewhere in the country. Um, it dealt with crime and violence. Um, it dealt with the subculture of class and race that developed as a after effect of colonialism so even though there isn't marked racism it's not white versus black it's that people dream of being light-skinned because people who have lighter complexions have more opportunities in the country it also dealt with the it also dealt with poverty in a really in your face kind of kind of thing it dealt with child abuse it dealt with so many negative issues that for me, this book gave me pause. I'm Jamaican and it was very difficult for me to read this book because there were so many elements of this book that even though I know of evidences of them, this book kind of made it seem like everybody in the community, every character in the book was engaged in some lawlessness, engaged in some exploitation of their family, of the people that they were in relationships with, of their community, of their country. and. That was the thing that kind of overpowered my experience of reading this book. I didn't feel like there were any characters in here that represented me or my family or anyone that I knew because while there are poor people in Jamaica, while there are people who work in the hotel industry and get caught up in the lifestyle that is portrayed in this book, that is not for me. That is not the majority of Jamaicans. As a matter of fact, in my in my own life my parents have been married for over 40 years they're still together they live in a nuclear family none of that is portrayed in this book the the mother in this book she pushes her daughter into a life where she trades sexual favors for objects for things for opportunities that is not my experience that is not the experience of anyone that i know um, I was really hoping that the author would have given me at least one character who embodied something different, who showed me that there was another life, there was another side of Jamaica. There weren't any. So everyone in this book was taking advantage of everyone else. I didn't like that. I also didn't like the way the book wrapped up. Some of the major characters disappear with no real explanation of what happens to them. And the one character that we end up knowing her story, she's the one that we don't like. She's the one that we like the least because the things that the author put throughout the story to kind of justify who she is and to justify the choices that she's made up to this point, they didn't ring true for me. So I didn't like this book, but I don't want to be petty. I don't want to make this book about me. I don't want to make it like, oh, I could write this book better because this book is pretty popular. I'm very apprehensive that there are people who will read this book and think that this is Jamaica and that this is all there is to Jamaica. And while I agree that this exists, a lot of this happens. There are, there's so much more to Jamaica. Like I didn't feel <laughs> the book is about here comes the sun. Where is the sunshine in this book? So in the end, I rated it three stars. I appreciated that there's a book about Jamaica that a lot of people are reading. I just wish it was a nicer book. I wish, I wish I was in the story.
I wish my, I wish I was in the story. I wish my mom and my dad and my brother, good, nice, honest, hardworking people who do not work in the tourist industry, who are, who have, who have normal occupations where they go to work every day and are doing positive things in the community. I wish they were in this book, at least, at least one person, but maybe in the book that I write. So Nicole Dennis, Nicole Dennis Ben, here comes the sun. I gave this a three star rating. Book number 15 is a short story collection entitled What is Not Yours is Not Yours by Helen Oyeyemi. Helen Oyeyemi writes magical realism. And just from looking at the cover, you can tell that there's some magical elements to this book. Like the person on the front is making shadow puppets of a dog, but the shadow that is cast on the wall is of a real dog. So it kind of gives you an idea that the things that we pretend to be so, sometimes they are so. And that is something that pops up in this book. The stories are linked in that some of the characters reappear from one story to the next. Sometimes they appear as children and later on you'll see them as more established adults. So you kind of get a glimpse of who they become after their story has ended. I really enjoyed that. The stories are all very diverse plots. So like the first story followed a woman who was abandoned as a baby and was raised by monks but she was left with a legacy. Um, the person who left her as a baby left her with a note that said, wait for me, I'm coming back for you and, and a key. And so she has this key that she wears around her neck, but she has no idea what it's for. So she has the key, but she's waiting for the lock that it opens. I really enjoyed that. Then she met a woman who had a very similar key. And it turns out, of course, that their keys are um, connected in some way. And I really, didn't understand everything that I was reading while I was reading it. But later, just kind of allowing the story to kind of sink in, I started to just appreciate the beauty of the book. So while I was reading it, I wasn't sure what my rating was going to be. I was thinking that it was kind of low because some of the things, not to be honest, some of the elements are confusing. They confused me. There were a lot of characters and sometimes it was difficult to keep track of who was who. So when I started reading the book, I stopped and I went back to the beginning and started making notes of who the characters were and how they were linked. And that helped. Remember the cover is showing you shadow puppets. There's a very interesting element of puppetry in this book. Like there's a story where some of the characters are puppeteers and the people that they're interacting with, you're not sure whether they are real or imagined. So if you know someone who's a puppeteer or a ventriloquist or something like that, you'll know that sometimes when they're interacting with the dolls, they talk to them as though they're real people. And sometimes you're not sure whether they know that the dolls aren't real. It gets a little confusing about their mental state. Well, that's discussed in this book. So the characters, there's a story here where the characters are puppeteers and they're in a puppet school. And some of the other people that they're interacting with, you're not really sure whether they are real or puppets. And so for a while, I felt like I could focus on that and make it about that and be disappointed with the book. But I found that I really enjoyed not being sure what I was reading while I was reading it, but enjoying it nonetheless. There's a story where she did a retelling of the Red Riding Hood story, but also inlaid a story about the goose that laid the golden egg. Fantastic. There is so many elements of mythological creatures, of fairy tale stories that she weaves into this normal life, which is why I think she's so good at what she writes, which is magical realism. In the end, I gave this a four star rating because I really enjoyed myself reading the story. I enjoyed making notes. I felt like I was in school doing a research paper on Helen Oyeyemi. I want to read more from her. She's published several novels. She started publishing when she was only 19 years old. And so she has several things that I can read and I'm looking forward to kind of doing a more in-depth look at her work. So that was book 13 to 15 in A Closer Book. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know if you've read any of these books and what you thought about them. And maybe we can talk a little further about something that you found interesting that maybe I didn't mention. So thanks for watching. Subscribe if you're not already. And I'll talk to you later. Until then, happy reading.